Hello there everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh and I'm reviewing the options newsletter results for the tracking for February, first week of February expiring February 4th, 2022. Now why am I doing this? I decided to go back and show pretty much all the newsletters for the whole year. I'm not going to do that in live time because obviously you have to sign up and pay for the subscription services if you want to join. And so I decided I will do this retroactively to show the trades that were in the past. January's is up. I did both advanced trader and beginner so people could see if they risk different amounts, what the results would be. I often get those questions. So now I'm going to do the month of February, advanced trader and risk two. But I, I divided them out because there's a lot of trades week by week. Um, to go over the results week by week. I also think it is important for people to look at their goals that way. Sometimes you will have a good day, sometimes you will have a bad day, sometimes you'll have a good trade, sometimes you'll have a bad trade. The fact is you can't live and die by one good trade or one, uh, or one bad trade or one bad day. You have to look at everything over the course of week by week, month by month, and year by year. It's one of the reasons why the newsletter is a subscription service that is over a range of time. So I have a six month service and a 12 month service. That gives you a lot of time to be, get acclimated to the letter, take the trades and really see the benefits of the service. So again, I meant to do this actually just like two months ago even. It's August and I've just been so busy, but I am finally getting to this and I am going to continue to show all the newsletters for the year. So hopefully by, well, it won't be by the end of this year because I won't be showing Decembers and Decembers, but it'll be well into the beginning of 2023 that I will have shown 12 consecutive months of newsletters. I don't think it should take people that long to make a decision to sign up. And you're not gonna get any benefit looking at these trades to do them retroactively. You've got to be in the letter to get the trades. And in options, if you know this, if you've traded options, timing is extremely important in options trades too. But I do think it is important to show the trades, how I made the calls ahead of time, and then the trades that went on to work and those that did not. And I think that it is important because then people can get a feel for what they would, can expect when they sign up and to see how many trades we're doing on any given different period. Some weeks are busier than others, okay? So this was a week where we had a win ratio of 50%. And the average return on investment for this particular week, again, Q4 expiration, was 67%. So let's go over it. If you have questions, uh, you can email me. You can always watch me at Fox Business, Fox News, and a lot of other channels now as well. But if you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype as well. So everything I do, every pick on this newsletter is based on my Golden Gap rating system. You will not learn the system t signing up for the subscription service. However, you will learn the system in the Golden Gap course. If you want to learn the system and sign up for the newsletter, I think that's the best case scenario for you to understand what's going on. But I do have this subscription service for options where there are no prerequisites. You don't have to have taken any classes of mine to sign up for the newsletter. There are people making money in the newsletter who have never taken one class with me. So that's totally up to you. So let's look at the trades reviewed now for this week. This is a win ratio of 50% for the week. There were five winners, zero break-evens, five losers, and 10 trades called this week with, it again, expiring the fourth. And this was an average risk I'm using for advanced trader is 8,000. You can risk more, you can risk less. I will do beginner later. Advanced trader profits for this particular week was $10,425. Average return on investment, 67%. So let's take a look at what happened this week. Again, this was 2-4. I called the BA puts, the 195s, uh, on the 26th. So I called them on Wednesday. Usually I'll call trades in the morning, but this was an afternoon trade. It was the 195 strike, expired the, the fourth. It was a put. I do put the symbol, the strike, the expiration date, and the type to do. The exit on this was a 28. Cost was $6, 12 contracts. Risk was 7,200. Sold at 1150, was a profit of 92% return. Investment of $6,600. I get this question a lot where people say, <clears throat> you know, how long are you in these? It could go on this day I call it, or it could take two days. Or it could take a week. You know, ideally something will go within 24 to 48 hours. I will say that. 
I will say that if it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to kill it. You have to decide if you were going to kill a trade in the, in, in the mid time period, if it's down 50%, your money management plan is yours. However, I hold everything win or lose, but that's, that's something that you could do. I think you will find good results doing that, but you might take a trade, you might take a trade, flip around, be down in it, and it may never go right and it may go bust and you could have saved 50%. So you really have to look at your risk and see what you can live with as far as holding. Sometimes things take a couple of days though, I will say that. Now let's look at the chart here in BA. We gotta go all the way back to January. Here it was drop, 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 fell, eggs on the 28th. There was a nice move, boom, got the drop. Again, a short, a put is a short, okay? So again, that was nice. It was a 199, 195 puts. You can see how that worked. Oh, I have the chart in here. <laughs> I didn't know I stuck it in here. There we go. So again, the drop. Apple, the 170 calls expired. February 4th, again, called on the 31st, exit of the 31st. This was the Apple calls, 365 for one, 20 contracts cost 7,300, sold at 525, profit $3,200, return on investment 44%. And this went the day that I called it. So we are on the 31st. So this closed here, gapped up. Here's the run up. And actually you could have held this. I'm just seeing this now, this continued. Again, you can hold something if you want. This was, this was one that kept going actually. Yeah. So, you, I mean, that looks like that ran all the way up to 176. So you're not always gonna get the highest, highest price in the exit. That's impossible to do. Sometimes I do get really good exits, but you time them the best you can. You look at the targets and be reasonable. What is important is to make money. She could have made more in this actually. That was that was a nice move there. Then Microsoft on Wednesday the 26th, it was the 300 calls. This expired again the 4th. This cost $9. Eight contracts, risk was $7,200, sold at $1,450. Profit was $4,400, return investment 61%. So this was one that was a long, so again, the 26, oh yeah, here was this one here. So again, this didn't exactly work the way I anticipated it though, to be honest with you. Closed here, gapped up, had somewhat of a move. It was positive. It, it didn't go as fast as I wanted it to or as big as I wanted it to. I mean, it was positive though, yep. That was that one. Again, it was the 300 calls. If this had, again, time is allowed you with options. You can see where it went. It went through the strike. If it had gone faster, it would have been worth way more. Like the day I called it or the second day. Do you know what I mean? But it still was positive. So that was that one. MCD was a 240 puts, expired on the fourth. This did not work at all. This was a total bust. Again, this is one where you could have saved money and killed it mid mid range bound. It just never never did anything right. This was on the twenty seventh. Yeah, I don't know why this didn't work right. Should have worked. Looking at that there. Again, just one of those ones that that didn't work right here. This sold off in here. You can see it. It took. It went later. Yeah, it was lower just didn't act right on that one particular day that was unfortunate. Uh, then we did the BA puts, 185s. This was Friday the 28th. This did not work out too. 525, 15, 78, 75. The whole thing did not work out. What happened here, 127. Again, we are on the 27th. Yeah, 
it should have worked out. That should have worked out too. Just looking at that. Actually, if I'd gotten in that the day before, it would have worked. So it started to go. I didn't get out. I wasn't up enough. Wasn't up enough to get out, in my opinion. So actually, this was up. You could have made money on it. You can see where it dropped in here. I thought that this would go further, and it didn't. That's when it reversed. Yeah. So this was one you could have, like, scalped it, actually, within the first 24 hours. Q's 340 strike expired to 4 puts. Let's look at the 340s. This did not work. 820 was for 1. So 10 was 8200. This did not work. This was on the 28th. Yeah. Ran up. Tried to fall here right before the expiration. Failed. Based out. We ended up falling later in the month. I knew we were lower here, but it couldn't do it right. So that was the 340s. This one lost. SPY 427 puts. Again, same day Friday, early in the morning, right out of the gate, 750. Again, did not work. This was the same same trade with the Qs. Like I can tell right off the top of my head what happened here. Same one here. Just didn't go right. Reversed. Based out. Fell later. Then the Facebook 290s. This was 128. And then went on 2-3. was a huge one. The cost was $9. Eight contracts. Risk was $7,200. Sold at $50. Bucks. This really made the whole week, actually. So I called this on... Friday morning, the same day I had called the the queues and the spy, thirty two thousand eight hundred profit return investment four hundred fifty six percent, which is huge. So this made the whole week. Uh, let's take a look at the chart. Oh, I remember what happened with this. This was the earnings. That's right. That's right. So this trade, when I called it, reversed and was down. So you had. I mean, by holding it through the earnings, which is not something, I don't normally take a trade into earnings. In this case, I didn't plan on holding it through the earnings. The trade was down. You, you couldn't have lost any more than what you risk with an option. So it, you had to hold it because you could have made money. Like you weren't going to lose more than you, you're going to lose because it was totally down. Here's a reversal after the trade was called. And then it went. And that's why that worked so well. That's right. Gosh, it seems like so long ago. This was up here the night before on the earnings. It was around 320. You can see how it reversed. So it was so far through the strike at that point, it was a short. It rallied up, then it collapsed on the earnings. Seems like, again, a long time ago, 240. And again, it was the 290 puts. So that worked, and the earnings were, were before the expiration date, which was Friday. And actually, if you held it into even Friday, you could have made more. But the point was that trade didn't set up right the first day or the second day to exit it with profit. Earnings came out and then boom, it worked in our favor. There are times that will happen if you do the trades and let them play out. That's one of the reasons I tell people to let things play out. In this case though, it wasn't planned, planned to do it into the earnings, but it did work out for all the best. Then the SPY was 425s on Friday the 28th. This didn't work out. Again, this was a put too. This was a time when everyone thought the market was just going to push back right up higher, and then it didn't do it. It didn't do it. Again, this was that same Friday, had the reversal based out, dropped at the end of February. February ended up being a good month to short, but not right away, not right out of the gate. People were buying the dips. The UPS 220s, this was an earnings one. This was a call. This was on Tuesday. It was a small winner, just in and out. This didn't work exactly the way I wanted to, even though it was a small game. Sometimes you get out of something right before the day of expiration if it's up, if it's just, just something that's going to make it. 950 for one, eight was 7,600. You could have made 1,200 bucks with this risk. Let's see what happened. This just did not work right. I don't know why. Sometimes things don't work right and there isn't any reason and you can't kill yourself over it. You really can't. You do the best you can. So here was the gap. Closed here, gapped up. Again, ran up here and then couldn't get, get going. So it was a positive trade, but it was extremely expensive. And you could have got out of it with money. Um, what time did we do this? Yeah, it was before the open. <laughs> that was expensive because I called it early and then it opened way past the strike. You can see where it opened at 225 there, yeah. So again, if you manage the trades to kill everything at 50% or scalp everything, get out of everything the first day, if it's positive the first day, you, that's one way to play it. That isn't what I do, though. 
If you have a small account, you want to do that. It condenses your losses and you have fast gains, but you will miss trades like Facebook. You will miss trades that go big. You will miss the big winners and you will also take losses and trades that go on to work later in the week. So that is something that you will have to make a decision with yourself. If you'd like to sign up, the Gap Options newsletter annual subscription, which is 12 months, is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. So it's 12 months of the letter. Trades are emailed to you in live time, most are set in the morning and most are sent before the open. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com to sign up. Again, sign up for only half annual. This is six months. I offer for $49.99. This is actually a great deal. It's five grand to get six months in the letter. This is gonna take you into early 2023. Shall you sign up now? You're just gonna take you into January 2023. That's plenty of time. Plenty of time to get in the letter, plenty of time to follow the trades and plenty of time to make money. So this was again, first week of February expiration. I will do the consecutive weeks in February. This is all advanced trader and then I'm gonna do beginner. I'm trying to take it step by step to do that. Again, we're doing them retroactive because I do not want people to take the trades. They must sign up for either one of these subscriptions to pay to get the trades. I also do not have any trial, so please do not ask me. This letter is like gold. If you do not know how to place an options trade, I'm not teaching people how to do that. You must get that information from your broker. This is where you're getting the actual newsletter like I showed you. If you're familiar with how to place an options trade on your platform, then you're good to go to do them because we're just doing straight calls or puts based on momentum trades. These are longs or shorts and it's based on the gap. If you have any other specific questions, feel free to email me. Again, at melissathestockswish.com and have a great day, everyone.